spread through all at one time. In addition to his personal story, Mark clearly shows that terrorism is an inherent part of true Islam. And in the process, he clearly proves that Islam is anything but a religion of peace. The book is easy to read. It will open your eyes to the truth about Islam. You will come to understand that we are really not in a war against terrorism. Rather, our war is with fundamentalist Islam. Terror is the method of our enemy. Terror is not the enemy. To get a copy of this book, give us a call at the number you see on the screen. The book can be yours for a donation of $15 or more, including the cost of shipping. One reviewer wrote, Given Gabriel's background as a former Muslim professor of Islamic history, this book is a bombshell because it is so authoritative. Here we have a former insider of Islam who knows the true connections between Islam and Jihad, the Muslim faith and terrorism. He is politically incorrect because he does not play the game of saying that the terrorists are the extremists, fanatics, but rather shows that the terrorists are true followers of their religion. Another reviewer wrote, what most struck me about this book is the love he has for Muslims and his fellow countrymen. This is not a book that bashes Muslims or Islam. It's a book that invites the reader to fully understand Islam and what the Quran really teaches in context. Folks, this is a definite must read. Get ready to take a lot of notes. Again, you can get a copy by calling the number on the screen and making a donation of $15 or more. Ask for the book by name, Islam and Terrorism. Now, you were telling us that you were arrested by the secret police of the Egyptian government for simply questioning some of the principles of Islam. What happened to you after that arrest? Um, they put me in the uh, little cell in, uh, in the, uh, uh, the headquarters of Egyptian secret service in the middle or the center of Cairo. Uh, they put me for three days with no food, with no water. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the fourth day, they start to interrogate me. They took me to one of the offices, maybe it's in the six or the seven floors, and uh, inter interrogating me during a day. And that fourth day, they start giving me food and water, and because they want to uh, stimulate me, and just want to get information as they can. And uh, they find out during the day, they cannot just get what they, they're looking for. And they start interrogating me during the evening time. So the evening time, it was the time of torture. Mm. Um, with cigarette, they burned me with cigarette in different places in my my body, yeah, sure. mm -hmm. and you can see here in uh, my hand, um, they um, they beat me, um, they put me in cold water, they put me in a little uh, 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 in, a, in a tank full, you see, um, filled with water, and they put a uh, hungry rats inside that tank, and they put me inside the tank. So you had rats for whole crawling over night. You? All night? All night, and the rats just swimming over the water, you see, around my head. And Did the rats bite you? No, well, no, 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 at all. This no. is like Daniel and the lion's den. And uh, <laughs> the next day they took me out, and uh, I was just um, surprised that I'm still alive. And they, But I don't know what is the next. So, And after that, they put me in a little cell with a vicious, hungry dog. And when they put me in a room and they close the door and I sit in the middle of the room and I was thinking that I'm going to be beaten by the, by, 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 by the dog. Dog, it will um, eat me, it will, so, but I was surprised when I found the dog, he just came and sitting in my right hand side. In fact, he licked you on the ear, didn't he? And he licked me in my ears. <laughs> and. They must have thought that you were Satan or something they, to have such they, power. They said that. They said that <laughs> this is a human being or something else. They wasn't really, um, um, they believe, they was believe that there is any, there is some spirit or some So at that point, didn't they, power, yeah. didn't they decide to just turn you over to some guys in a cell and tell them that you had renounced uh, Islam and let them kill you? Uh, yeah, so this is, this is uh, the understanding that uh, I've been questioned by professors at the university. I've been fired by the university. To them, mean this guy, he's just out of Islam now. He's convert now. Um, In fact, they wanted to find out what missionary had converted you, didn't they? Exactly. And you hadn't been converted. It, exactly. No, I was have no idea about Christianity in that time, yes. about Christ. I never even 
um, um, discussed Christianity. But um, automatically in Egypt, when someone decides to leave Islam, yes. they will accuse him automatically that he became under pressure from church or some Christian, and he converted to Christianity. Well, how in the world did you get out of that situation without losing your life? Um, the, I was crying before the God who was created me in that time. I wasn't know who is. Yes. Um, and uh, after 15 days, uh, my uncle, he was working as the vice president of Egyptian parliament. He was visiting Russia at that time. When he came back and he heard about my, um, my kidnapping and so he came with permission from the government and he came with his car and he took me out of the so prison. So you got out of prison due to the political influence of a relative who had been out of the country. Absolutely. And then when you went home, I understand your father tried to kill you. My father, he tried to kill me later after one year uh, searching for God, uh, find out who is God, you see, till I received a Bible from a Christian pharmacy. So when I read, I start reading the Bible, I start to find the truth about Christ. When I, after I give my life to do to the Lord, I lived uh, one year, uh, one year, whole year as a secret believer. So you when were, my father heard about my conversion, he ooh. shot me with his own gun. He tried to kill so me. So you were given a Bible by a Christian pharmacist, and that brought you to the Lord. Yes. And when that happened, your father decided to kill you for the honor of the family, I guess. Uh, because yeah, for uh, he just felt there is a shame. Uh, going to be over him and he, all the life, and, or, or the family, even the community. The and so he shot at you several times and all the bullets missed? No one bullet missed me, about maybe five, six bullets. I understand that your sister mm. finally got your passport, got you out of the country, and where did you go? Uh, when my father, he just uh, shot me and tried to kill me, I was just, I was running away yes. from his face, and I went to my sister, and in my sister's house, uh, I put the whole situation in front of the Lord, and the Lord showed me to get out of Egypt in the same evening, same day. My sister helped me. She, she brought my stuff. And where did you go to when you fled? I fle fled to South Africa by South the road, Africa. traveling from Cairo to South Africa for three months over the road. And uh, I was the first Egyptian who did overland journey between Cairo and Johannesburg um, for take the trip take almost three and, months okay and so then you get to South Africa and did you meet some Christians there yes in South Africa I met with uh, many Christians and uh, many churches they start to hear about my story because the public media in South Africa they wrote article and published articles about my story and my is it true that assassins were sent to South Africa to kill you um, absolutely um, in South Africa especially after I wrote my first book in South Africa and my activity became very well known and Muslim community they felt they threatened by that my activity there and by this book was released there in Johannesburg in 1996 and they tried to end my life there so few this, times. Re this religion of peace just because you question Islam this religion of peace kidnaps you tortures you tries to kill you yeah. and even sends assassins to kill you in South Africa yeah that's some religion yeah. of peace isn't it yeah this is the uh, uh, this is how the world really um, been um, um, deceived by the media, by the uh, world media, the secular media, by um, Islam. It's not, uh, it's not religion of peace. Well, Mark, we're going to pause again here, folks, and uh, we'll be back with you in just a moment. Are you receiving the Lamplighter magazine? If not, then give us a call and request your free subscription today. Every other month, you can look forward to relevant, biblical, and captivating articles. All you need to do is call us at 1-800-705-8316 during our regular business hours, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time, or email us at lamblion.com and let us know that you would like to start receiving the lamplighter. And if you contact us this week, we'll make sure that you get a copy of this lamplighter devoted to the truth about Islam. Okay, folks, let's just take a moment to summarize. Mark was a professor of Islamic history at Al-Azhar University in Cairo, and he was also serving as a Muslim imam, the equivalent of a pastor of a mosque, when he would openly question some things about Islam. Uh, he was immediately arrested, he was tortured for several weeks, and when he was finally released and went home, his own father tried to kill him. Uh, you were finally able to escape to South Africa, Mark. Yes. And tell us, 
when you arrived in South Africa, you said you met some Christian friends. In fact, I think you lived with a Christian family for a while. Yes. But let's just back up for a moment, because uh, I know you became a Christian before you left uh, uh, Egypt. Egypt, yes. What appealed to you about Christianity? Uh, the, uh, before I met with Christ, I lived for 34 years under Islam, believing in Islam, serving Islam, learning about Islam, teaching about Islam. And I lived another year uh, without faith after I find myself a more